Good morning. Today we're going to be exploring shape. It is one of the best elements of art to explore. There's so much that we can learn that's going to impact our own art. I'm going to start off with some examples of face artists and their use of shape. Then I'm going to move into some books, some wonderful resources um, that are worth investigating. Um, and we're going to look at uh, our colours as usual and then move into some wonderful exercises. Uh, so if I start with my colours, I've got lemon, yellow. I actually went through my drawer this morning and chose stuff that I haven't used for a while and I want to use up because these exercises today are easy and fun. Lemon yellow, cobalt blue hue, so I never use it but it looks exactly like phthalo blue and I've got um, quinacridone opera. It was a little sample tube and uh, I've only just recently refound it, so I'm going to use that as well. We're going to be talking about shape. So I've got my usual round brushes. These are quills, but they perform just like a round brush. Hi, Lena. And I've got a few of those for when we paint some round shapes. But I also have some flat brushes. These are going to be perfect because we're also going to paint some dynamic diagonals. And that name I got from Linda Kemp. I'm going to show you her book as well. So I've got a few um, of my flat brushes, some tiny ones. This one is actually a tiny wisp. And again, I was looking for stuff I don't use much so that I can use it up. So they're the brushes that I've got ready. I also have some little dishes because I thought we, when we paint some beautiful round shapes that we could use uh, glazing and therefore I'm going to make little batches of colour in those three colours, the three primaries, the yellow, the blue and the red, make some batches so that I can reuse them and they won't mix in with anything else on my paint. So um, you might have the type of palette where you can make a little uh, well of colour anyway. That would work just as well. So I thought I'd start off with some famous paintings, as always. If you go searching on Google for some images of famous artists, famous artworks that include examples of shape, you come up with a stack of males. So you have to actually ask it about females. So I've got these two examples here. I showed you this one last week um, and it's probably the sort of painting by Lee Krasner that I could show you every single week because it's got line, it's got shape, it's got colour, it's got value, it's got everything that you could um, when you start to talk about the elements of art. But these shapes are an example of random shapes. So there's triangles, there's, I don't know, what do you call that shape that's got one, two, three, four sides? I don't, can't remember the names of um, those random shapes. Is that a rhombus? Anyway, it's got triangles, some wonky squares. It's got circles, ovals, it's got a bit of everything. And when you create a quadrilateral, thanks Liz, when you create an artwork that's got a bit of everything, you get a sense of um, randomness and it's not a settling kind of feeling. And that's so interesting, this one, to compare with uh, this one by Helen Frankenthaler, an artist I actually haven't heard of before, but she's used also used incredible range of um, shapes so we've got the pointy diagonals we've got round shapes so they're very abstract these shapes but you don't get this same sense of unease that this one has I feel like Lee Krasner was having a fabulous time as she was creating this but she's also quite kind of unhinged as she builds this amazing composition it does have this sense that it might collapse at any moment whereas you don't get that sense from this at all so this one uses a whole range of shapes but by including these incredibly light tones you get an incredibly different impact the other amazing work uh, by Piet Mondrian so this is one of the ones that comes up if you do a search uh, is and I included this because it's so unusual but it's also quite brilliant. And because he's got these big, strong um, horizontals like this, you get this sense of calm. And he's balanced the squares and the rectangles in, 
this insanely beautiful way. I bet it's got a lot to do with the golden triangle and, you know, how you get that maths and the Fibonacci sequence and all that. I, I bet that there is a mathematical reason as to why this is incredibly uh, satisfying. That's going to be something I can uh, look up. He's also got verticals in it as well, which kind of can have a very uplifting uh, sense. So they're the famous ones. I move into, just get rid of those. So this is my folder. Liz mentioned she's got a notebook going. So this is the folder that I began. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Uh, where we've got the elements of art. Last week was about line and I've gone in little dodgy lines there. This week is all about shape. I've already scheduled colour and value because this series is going so well and I'm loving your support and your thumbs up and um, the things you've been saying on the comments so much that I'm going to forge ahead. I think that the learning from the elements of art is absolutely wonderful. Just in the researching shape, I've it started to make me think about the impact that my shapes have. So this um, one was about line. That's why I stuck that one in there because it's the first one we explored. But I've also included the lines. It's quite a lovely design because it's full of round shapes and it's not something that I had thought through before. Here's the examples from last week. Um, and you'll notice that I only stuck in two because the third one was just so horrible. I didn't like any of them, but I thought, okay, it's an exploratory thing that we're doing here. So I'm forcing myself to stick them in. And then there's those other easy, beautiful examples where you swatch out something and come back in with a marker. Uh, and then lovely page ready to stick in some examples that we're going to create today on shape. So I said I would do some books. I'm going to zoom in a little here so you can see this a little better. This first up is a book by Shirley Trevina. Oops, that way. Just zoom in a touch more. There, good. So I have a review on this. I actually have two videos that I've made about Shirley Trevina. I adore her work. They're complex compositions. Uh, they just feel inspired to me. This book is called Breaking the Rules of Watercolour. I don't know that you have to own this book. This could just be one you borrow from the library. Um, but I do own it for the art. It's not for the information. For example, I went looking for some examples because that's what you guys asked for last week, some book examples that you could access. And um, so Shirley has this section here called Finding Shapes. But when you start to read the blurb, it's about when she was in England. Like, I don't care. What I want to know about is what you think about shapes, the way you use them in your art, and you don't necessarily get that information from Shirley, but you can examine her art, and that's the second video that I made where I examined one of her artworks and created an artwork from it. That video is actually more informative than the first video about the book. I will try to put those, remember to put those uh, links in the comments um, after I finish live this morning. So what she does say about uh, these flowers is that think of them as triangles and then you repeat the shape of the triangle. A lovely way to think about your composition. And then she's got some figs. So again, you could... Um, <laughs> exaggerate the shape of the figs and make them into little triangles and that can help when you're repeating a shape which is one of the things that you do um, that you can do in art to examine um, to make your to use repetition in your art the other thing I thought I'd talk about very briefly here is this painting here I thought that I considered using this one today because it's full of triangles in a landscape, wonderful thing to do. Again, a wonderful way to design and compose a landscape. But I thought that this one would be brilliant. I put a little note there to myself. When we come to texture, this one will be brilliant to do a version of a landscape like that. And then we'll be using colour and value and line because as we move through them, we'll become more conscious of the way that we use the elements of art. So that's Shirley, but I'm going to move very 
quickly, I hope, I'm just dumping that book, into the best book that I own. It's, it's, it's so far advanced over every other book that I um, have, not just on watercolour, but on art in particular, anything about art. Uh, she uses watercolour and acrylic and um, it's called Painting Outside the Lines. Again, I've got a review, a, a video reviewing it and it is full of the most fantastic information. So she's got this section here about um, shapes have personality and it's completely true. I um, thought that we could, just trying to put that into view there and bring this down there. I thought what we could do is focus in on two, uh, which is the inviting round shapes. And for that, I thought we could, looking for my pencil. No, I'll do it on a pen because that's much easier for you guys to see. So I thought what might look beautiful is to create a series of rounds. And then I thought, I think I'll make them balloons because that will give us this beautiful opportunity to uh, glaze one shape over another. I'm putting in little curvy linear uh, strings on them because we're talking about rounds. Because if you create a series of balloons and give them straight strings, you know, as though someone's holding them down there, it's a completely different look to including soft round tails like that. So just a point there about um, rounds and dynamic di di <laughs> dynamic diagonals. I thought that was the other one that's absolutely fascinating because I do end up using triangles in my art all the time. She goes on to say that they are exciting and energetic. Uh, they can be joyful, dangerous as well and um, I think that these points are absolutely beautiful. If you're going to include these incredibly pointy bits, then it's going to have an impact on the art. So I thought the other exercise that we could do, and we'll do them at the same time because then we'll let that dry and move to this one, is to design something full of triangles. And if I, it occurred to me by looking at her book that this one here looked so much like a person. So I thought let's create people out of triangles and um, she makes the point that if you put the triangle on an edge like that you create even more um, not instability but more dangerous looking or more exciting more energetic um, we could use like she talks about this is all Linda Kemp when I'm saying she she talks about if you use equilateral triangles and you place them in that stable way, you're going to get something very stable with as well as getting the excitement and energy that you get from the triangles. But I was thinking, let's make it even more dynamic and let's make them into kind of people. So the, every time the body will be a triangle. So I'm going to do another triangle here and I'm going to make them weird looking. And this one can be looking down. And then maybe we include another person up here. We'll do a little bit of designing a bit later. And instantly it starts to tell like a little story. Actually, that looks like an arm. It starts to tell like a little story of um, the person talking to the person or the big person looking down on the little person. Uh, we're creative types, so we can invent whatever we like. So I'll come back to that and... Um, uh, talk about how we're going to paint the beautiful rounds that are inviting and I mean we all love voluptuous paintings don't we you get um, uh, beautiful um, I don't know why is it as humans we love the idea of uh, round so to that end about round it's also full of beautiful art if you um, are interested in that book and I'll put a link to that as well. I thought I'd do a little quick demo about the impact of um, 
Oh, peers. We're so going to use peers as a subject for next week. So um, next week's subject is colour. And I thought um, that pears, they're so easy and so beautiful to paint. And that's the sort of painting you might end up um, putting in your kitchen. I think that would be rather lovely. Anyway, instantly, can you see that when I handle the pear, and you see people doing this in the fruit shop when they pick up, they often will stroke <laughs> Um, you know, caress something that is round. That's deeply attractive to humans. Same with the um, mandarin. It's deeply attractive. You just want to touch it. It's it's beautiful and attractive. Now, when you come to a shape like this, when it's completely different, but it is curvy linear. But for some reason, I don't. Um, <laughs> Satu's there should be working, but watching. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I absolutely love that. Uh, so I'm going to put the, the gorgeous curvy linear round shapes up here. Um, and I thought uh, you'd never see someone in the supermarket handling a uh, carrot or caressing a carrot. You just never do. Uh, I thought I'd take it from this lovely shape. I love this uh, thing, Renata, my wonderful friend Renata bought me that. I probably say that a lot. My friend Renato, but she buys me stuff. I'm just thinking about turning the tip into a. <laughs> Anyone who tunes at this point will be confused about whether this is a cooking show or an art show. But what I wanted to do is continue going round, round, round to there, to that point. <laughs> and I mean that literally that point so the effect of that shape now versus this shape is completely different this this um pointed bit is not something that we are going to want to handle it's not inviting but it's something cooking up a composition excellent Liz thank you um, but it does make the point that Linda Kemp does in her book. It's not just dynamic, but it is also, you know, something where, you know, if it's pointing up and you fall on it, it's very unattractive. If this is sitting up and you fall on it, nothing's going to happen to you. This there does have a tiny element of danger. If you want dy dynamism in your paintings, you can be thinking about pointy uh, triangles and pointy shapes. Anyway, I'm going to pack away my little cooking demonstration there and get out my pad again. That one I'm putting carefully down on the ground. So here is what I thought we would do. I'm just putting it in the center there. Bring this down a little and that to there. So I'm going to take a moment to design. I'm going to use a big marker so that is easy. Um, yeah, that would be, Julie says, that would be weird. What would others think if you were stroking the carrot? I mean, at that moment that they <laughs> tuned in. Yes, that was a <laughs> slightly risky thing to do. Anyway, um, we're going to do two paintings. Oh, I thought we might do them this way, in fact. So... I'm just going to design it this way so that you can see where I'm going. So I'm thinking I will get a rectangular piece of paper. I will divide it into two and on this side will be the rounds and then this side will be the diagonals. I don't have a reason for why I chose it in that order. It doesn't matter. Um, so... How many balloons? Are you going to do small balloons, large balloons? I'm thinking that, uh, you know, we've got about an 40 minutes together, let's say. Uh, so I won't do too many. So balloon and curvy bit. I'm just going to draw a few in to just decide. Oh, maybe it'll continue coming down and just uh, every single one's going to have a little curvy thing. I could make it come Oh, maybe I go up here. I'm going to make them touch. So that will touch and then there'll be a stroke on that. Do I like that? Oh, it's very unbalanced, isn't it? If you are looking at an artwork and you think that you get the feeling like, oh, I'm going to tip in that direction, um, I find that quite, um, to me, I find that to mean that you have a composition that's unbalanced. So perhaps to balance off that, heaviness there I could put an extra one there or I could put in a little one 
over there. Yeah, that's helped. Look, <laughs> they're looking a little bit like sperm, but anyway, let's forge ahead. And when we actually create it, we will give them little gentle V shapes on the bottom, just in case uh, it looks a little bit like they're swimming somewhere. So these um, tails, by the way, will also be really pale. So <laughs> Julie's laughing, thank you. Uh, so for the diagonals, if you like this idea about the people, then you can go ahead with that. You might, though, like this idea that you just glaze. So there's lots of glazing ex, um, ex <laughs> and lots of glazing examples today. You can create just a beautiful stable design, but I really thought I loved this idea of creating some people that are interacting in some way. So I'm going to start with a small-ish person and I'm not going to make any of them stable. All of them are going to be unstable. And this one's going to have a head. Oh, maybe the head's pointing away. And then I'm going to put in a big person Maybe, oh, I know, it'll touch. And then we, we can, oh, and I want that to be unstable as well. And then oh, let's have a big head. That's not too bad. I do want to include a third one, but I don't mind the little story that this is telling. So maybe the third one is a little triangle here, upside down triangle. And then I get to glaze something on and maybe it looks like, um, no, that's just odd looking, isn't it? Okay, let's have another person. And the person, oh, let's have a dog. Triangle for the head and triangle for the body. And that's a running dog. <laughs> I love that running dog, actually. <laughs> Um, anyway, I'm just going to start painting because I might change that round in a minute. Um, do you want to do a little bit of practice before you're starting or are you happy to just jump in and begin painting? We don't really need to do practice, do we? I'm going to get, oh, so I began an example of it here. So uh, three colour um, balloons and then some triangles. That's a bit hard to see, but I want it to be even lighter than that. Um, happy to jump in. Excellent. That's what I needed to know. Okay. Therefore, nice big um, rectangle. I'm going to keep my suggestion of a colour, a suggestion of a design handy. Put that over there. I've got a sponge in front of me. I'm going to keep this one here, that one there, and I'm going to zoom out so that you can see my palette while I do a bit of colour preparation. That way, it's always counterintuitive when I'm moving the camera around. All right. I'm, I listed the colours in the comments in case you want to um, go back up and look exactly, but I've got permanent yellow, lemon, cobalt blue hue and opera. And opera is this insane pink. I'm going to squeeze out a small amount and I've also got some in my palette if I need a lovely darker version there. Yellow, cobalt blue hue. Uh, I'm going to squeeze. Ugh some into the palette as well. Not too much, probably half a pea because these are going to be just um, little wells of pale colour. I'm going to put, now this is some um, phthalo blue and this is cobalt blue hue. And while I think they are very similar, I'm not going to mix them up um, in my palette. I'll clean this off later, but I'm getting to use up that tube. And the other one is Opera, also called quinacridone opera. Anything that says quinacridone is beautifully transparent. So again, a small amount in there, half a pea, and it doesn't live permanently on my palette, but I'm just going to put it near the red. So I've got some to access. And then hopefully I don't have to come back and do any other mixing. All right. I've got my pipette. I'm going to put a big dollop in there. Start with my round brush and I'm 
after a lovely pale yellow. I'm just going to swatch it out and see. Yeah, that's beautiful. Okay, yellow's done. And I'm going to keep that brush for it. I'm getting another one that's, this brush is the same. It's a zero, zero black gold. Wet the brush, squirt of water, and mix that blue in. Oh, it's very powerful. So I'm not going to mix in all of that. I want a pale blue. I just made a mess on the page. Anyway, and swatch it out. Oh, lovely and pale. That's it. Right. Blue. And then I'm going to get a third brush, wet the brush. This is also insanely um, strong, wonderful chroma. And yep, I don't even need half of that pink. I reckon I just mixed in about a third. And that's probably also why, oh, beautiful and pale. That's probably also why that pink has lasted um, so uh, incredibly long. That tiny little tube, it's a Holbein opera and um, it's wonderfully intense. Okay, I've got a little mark here, bits of, I don't know if that's, ah, oh, yeah, it's, it's um, a little bit of cracked paint. Okay, bit of tape. I'm going to do the two paintings at once and that way we can move from that one to that one as we're uh, allowing one bit to dry. I'm going to get a bit of tape and eyeball halfway. It's an exercise so I don't need to spend time doing that. I'm going to rub it in. So I've got good contact and I'll get a nice edge. This is a block, so I don't need to do all four edges. Oh, having said that, oh, I am because although I'm about to run out of tape and then I'll have to go and find some. When I went to stick it into my book with the other one, I found, do I have enough? I found that I was sorry there wasn't a border around all of them. So maybe I will put a border and, but only if I don't run out of tape. Oh, it's incredibly low. I'm nearly at the end. I'm going to get the top and the bottom, I reckon. I'm and... And there's the end, so it won't even make it to to there. Oh well, dump that. I'll get a top and a bottom. That might look all right. Now, I've got a little bit of an idea. I'm going to zoom back. Um, I'll just move over a little bit so you can see more of the painting. If you like the idea, of including more of the palette, do let me know and I can happily uh, zoom back out a little bit. But at the moment you can see most of it and a better, closer version of this one. So um, I'm going to start on this side and then move to that side. It's just a little bit easier for my arm. I'm less likely to smudge stuff. So balloons, I'm not going to draw them. We've got a little bit of idea about where we're going. I'm just going to show you how to paint them. I'm going to use all three colours in every balloon. And um, that way I'm going to get a beautiful colour harmony going. And these beautiful pale washes and round brushes are going to make it easy to paint. So I'm just going to begin and paint a oval-like shape. And as we now know, these are inviting round shapes. So by creating a painting full of inviting round shapes, it uh, can suggest a soft, gentle mood. I'm just bringing, mostly painting with the round of the brush, the belly of the brush, and then as I come down to the bottom, creating a soft, gentle 
um, bottom to the shape. It's kind of like a little point, isn't there? And then there's like that little tying thing. But I'm just going to let that run off to nothing. I just little lifted my brush. So there's a little bit of a broken line. It's yellow, so it's really hard to see. But you'll see on the next one. Dump that brush and come in with some a little bit of pink. Oops, I meant that to be curvy. A little bit of pink little bit of pink and then jump into the blue because I've prepared all these beautiful soft tones and they're all really wonderful and wet. They're just moving into each other very nicely. I've also got this flat brush there and I'm going to create a little highlight. The thing about the highlight is that if you put a highlight on this side, then just be consistent about them all having a highlight on this side. It's really hard to see the highlight because it's um, yellow. I'm going to just draw, drag it through that and mix those paints in a little more. I don't like exactly where they've landed, so I'm just encouraging them. And each time I'm aiming for a roundish mark. All right, that's a bit better. Okay, back to um, the colours and this time I'm going to vary it and this time it'll be a blue. I'm not going to do any uh, next to each other now. That will happen with the lovely glazing section. So here's my blue and I'm going to put in a beautiful blue balloon. And again, I'm using the belly to create the shape. Got a bit of a rough edge, but I've got a moment to correct it. And I'll correct that edge and just use the point to come down to make a point at the bottom. And again, I'm going to ever so delicately put it in and then make a little broken line and a broken line. And it just softens uh, the tail up just that little bit. Little bit of yellow into the balloon because the colors would be actually reflecting off each other. I'm gonna have to wash that because it picked up that blue and beautiful pink um, into that yellow is a little intense so I'll put some pink there and pink there and then come in this brush actually wasn't very absorbent so I'm going to get rid of that one try another brush that's a bit more absorb absorbent so I've, this one is wet and let's see if it's much better it's easier, in fact, to do the curvy linear marks. I'm taking off a highlight, hopefully give the balloon, I'll go right to the edge for that highlight, hopefully give the balloon a little volume, which is kind of what we'll do in form. This could be a wonderful example of form as well. And then I'm going to put in some curvy linear marks just to combine the paint a little more. And I've maintained my highlight and I think I'll wash the brush, dry it off and more of a highlight there, highlight. Get rid of the moisture because you don't want to introduce moisture, you just want to suck up some of the paint. I think I'll include a little light bit there. Uh, yeah, possibly a little too light up here. So maybe I'll get some of this blue and drag it up. That's a bit better. Right, so I could do a third balloon and I'll do that in pink. I'm going to wash that brush so that it's ready for lifting up. And now a pink balloon. And um, this is dry already, so I'll go over that tail um, but not on the balloon because that's still wet. So beautiful round curvy linear shape that's going to make us feel scrumptious. Coming down belly and then the tail and the point <laughs> and then I'm going to put in a tail and again, little broken line, tiny little go off to absolutely nothing. Eileen says, hello from Boston, Massachusetts. Hey, that's cool. Okay, dump the pink and 
drop in a tiny bit of yellow, but again, a curvy linear mark when you drop it in. Oh, must keep that yellow clean, washing that one. And a tiny bit of blue because it's quite, can dominate. Oh, that's so beautiful what that yellow is doing in there. Tiny bit of blue and a tiny bit of blue. And But every single time I'm doing curvy linear marks to try and enhance that idea that it is round, removing all the excess moisture and I cleaned it so that I can do my highlight. That is perfect. I'm going to just adjust the shape of it a little and adjust this bit here with the blues just sitting there and I don't really love it. I'll just wash that off and remove the excess moisture. Oh, I just realised I'm not removing the excess moisture on camera. Um, that's just pretty, but I do want to just get it to move a little bit more. The blue didn't move much, so that will be partly to do with the viscosity not matching, which is just, you know, wetness. Um, over here, we're going to start on our composition. So hopefully you grabbed a pencil and you came up with a little composition. Maybe there's, uh, you like this idea of the triangle people. And um, I think I'm going to do this one. I'll ignore that one there. But maybe the dog will be up here. I'm going to put the big person over on the left and the small person here. And then the dog can be over there. I'm just going to jump in, just like Julie said, jump in. And um, the big person is going to be pink. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy that. This is when we need, I'm going to move my little pink one there. And this is where we need the flat brushes. So this one I'm going to start with. Actually, I've got a big flat brush. You can see that I used a green um, ink on it and it was kind of white and the green ink completely uh, stained it. It has no effect on the efficacy of the brush. However, works just fine. Okay, the beauty of the flat brush is that I'm gonna get these beautiful flat lines. So I'm gonna start with a big triangle. I'm gonna do the base first, because then I remember that I'm giving it this um, edge that is un off kilter the human that I'm kind of painting. Oh, hard to get this edge going here. The human that I'm painting is not stable. The human is excited or the human is in motion or, oh, no. Oh, there you go. Mostly gone. It's a little bit of a stainer. I'll move it over there. Okay. Big triangle that has a big impact. I don't know whether or not this opera is going to be easy for me to paint with or hard. Permanent rose is easy to paint with. Cobalt blue is easy to paint with. I'm going to try and make that a bit straighter. But alizarin crimson really hard to get a flat wash. It looks nice and I've gone over and over it. So this one um, is turning out to be quite good. And then this is going to be the person. So this is going to be a little bit like this person here. And then I'm going to give it a big um, head that's folded right down. So it's going to come out that way. Oh, I'll make it go off the page and come down here and come down there. So you can see the flat brush just makes that a dream to use. Now it's very tempting to drop in other colors into it, but then I'm just repeating the method over here. I'm just gonna see whether I can make it look quite beautiful by building um, transparent shapes over other transparent shapes. Okay, going back to my design, I've moved this big shape over there, and now I want this little shape to be like, you know, a big figure uh, that's leaning over a small figure. And so it's going to be here. So get rid of the pink, wash my flat brush. That brush was brilliant for the job. 
just dry it off a little bit. And um, so down here, if I want to encourage that this um, small, oops, encourage the small figure to be more insipid, I could go for a more insipid colour. Or if I want the small character to have some more strength, then I could go to blue. All right, let's go to blue. Let's not make it the little character wussy. The camera's just gone a bit blurry there. Just uh, go in and see. That's better. All right. Small character now, small triangle. And again, the character is going to be on an angle, so not a flat, and extend it up to there and bring this one down. Okay, I'm getting better at painting triangles. It's not that much call for painting triangles, but you definitely might end up painting houses, and that is full of rectangles and straight lines. So maybe it ends up practice for that. Okay, this little one here. Now, if I suggest a head that's nestled in there, that might be quite lovely. Oh, I wonder if that would look great if I put a little head goes in there. And um, where will the triangle go? That way or come down? Ah, oh, what the hell? I'll leave it as a... No, if I leave it as a diamond, it doesn't look humanish at all. So which way? That way, that way. <laughs> I'm making a quadrilateral, Liz. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I didn't mean to. Okay, I am stuck with that shape now because I just have to get bigger and bigger. Anyway, it's got a point on it. So <laughs> bit of a shame, though, because it doesn't really look like a, uh, a head. And I kind of liked the idea it might look a little bit like um, figures having some sort of... <laughs> conversation. Anyway, the dog's going to help, I'm sure. I need a smaller flat brush. I'll get rid of that one. I need a smaller flat brush and the dog can be multicolored. Let's put in the dog. Um, will the dog be here or here? Now, I like the idea of filling this space here. So the dog is perhaps it's off in the distance and it's Maybe it's running towards them. Triangle, triangle, and a little head for the dog. Requires a bit of concentration. I'm going to give it a little triangle tail up there and a little triangle. It's an incredibly point. It's a lot like the carrot, this one. Incredibly pointy and a suggestion of a back leg there. <laughs> Looks like a bonnet. Ah, oh, <laughs> thanks, Liz. It does, it does look like a bonnet. Yeah, that's a creative thought, isn't it? Okay, I'm done with the yellow. I was going to drop another colour in, but um, my opportunity for that just passed while I was um, laughing. <laughs> so that doesn't matter. I can do another dog and glaze over the top. How are these going? Are they... Oh, I think I need to dry them. Okay, I'm going to get out the dryer and dry the whole thing so that I can come back in and do layer number two while we explore shape. Wonderful and dry now. Um, so I might put a pink balloon over the yellow and a 
blue balloon over. You get the point. I'm just going to mix it up each time that I create a balloon shape. I'm going to use the same um, batches of colour. I could go darker, but um, it might be quite – I could go lighter as well as um, darker. So they're kind of veering towards mid-tones. Um, do I go lighter or darker? I think I'm going to get my pipette and add a little bit of water to each of them. Go a touch lighter. I think that might, might be interesting. Never know till the end and that's kind of cool. Okay, lovely pale batch of uh, lemon. And i um, got one there, so perhaps one is, oh, and off. Okay, this time I'm going to paint the side that's not glazing there and move towards the one that I'm glazing over just slowly. <laughs> I'm a bit wonky down there. And when it come ta comes time to put this shape in, I'm going to do it in as few strokes as possible. And that is the key. Little stroke for a tail. That is the key to making it um, glaze over another colour without disturbing the layer below. So a little bit of blue, a little bit of blue, a little bit of blue and a little bit of pink because I'm enjoying putting all three colours in and I'm going to risk a bit of pink. Oh, I was so fast then. There and a, nah, that'll do. I'm just going over the top. Back to my round brush and I'll put in a little highlight, a little highlight. The risk is that I'm going to uh, remove some of that blue so I'm not going to drag in that spot anymore. Just move that down and um, that's kind of pretty. Do I interrupt it? Yeah, just a bit, just a couple of curvy linear marks to suggest, oh, that's just lovely grey. That's how you make complementary grey, mix three primaries together. All right, that was yellow and I'm in love with this pink and it's beautiful intensity. And um, I'll put a nice one here and it'll go over too. So I'll just have to go for it. And there, maybe that goes up, up, and this one's really high. Maybe it's connected to that one. Oh, I'm going to put it up here. Okay, so again, I'm going to create paint as much of the shape that's outside because it's so easy to go back and forth and it doesn't matter that much, and prepare to come down and go over the blue. One stroke, that's the goal anyway, and then it just stays uh, lovely and transparent. You get that beautiful pink on top of the blue. Um, and a tail, so the tail can come down and over that one and a broken line at the bottom to nothing. Um, I'm going to join it there. And... Drop in some other colour, some blue, blue, and a little bit, a little bit of yellow. And then repeat back to the round brush that is going to allow me to lift off a little highlight. The pink lifts so interestingly, and some curvy linear marks to get them moving and wash it off and remove the highlight again. There, there. And just go round and round. Will that lift? I need to interrupt that bit there, so I'm going to drag some of the yellow around. But every stroke, my goal is that it's round. Oh, that's a bit better. It was just a bit, the white part, the lifted off part was a bit odd. I'm washing that brush every single time. Uh, I can, this one's dry as well, so 
I could include more yellow balloons and now it's about personal choice. I don't love yellow so I'm going to start to just create blue and pink. That's for me that's enough yellow and of course for you you'll do exactly as you please. So I've got, um, oh I shouldn't hold that there while I do it. I just dropped something again. <laughs> just clean that off. Oh, and there's another one there. Anyway, uh, one, two, three. Uh, do I leave a space and create a balloon over here? Maybe a little one? Or do, I've got this one going off the page. Do I anchor it on this side, maybe up here? This is dry as well, so I could do a smaller one that's off in the distance. And should it go up to there or there? or there, or oh, there, and then that pink one can remain the highest. I quite like that there'll be some sort of peak, and these are both dry. So I'm going to put in a blue one that just touches the edge, just making all these decisions as we go. Fill in the blue, and one pass at the yellow, bring it down, and one pass on the pink. Trying very hard not to redo it. And this will be over that one, come down, broken line, broken line, broken line. Grab the pink, so important to have these colors ready so that you can drop in whatever you want, wherever you want. Dry it off and highlight. Nice, I'll draw little curvy linear suggestions. Might get the highlight and expand it a little. That's nice. I think I dropped some water over on this one because in the middle of my beautiful flat pink is like a star shape that's uh, slowly, um, looks very much like a drop of water went on when it was nearly dry. Okay, for me that um, uh, is so much more satisfying than the yellow that have all the rainbow colours in it. I'm going to do lots more blue with pink because it makes me feel good. Wash that one so that it's ready every time. Okay, uh, I can fit in another blue down there, so I will. Every single time it's a great opportunity to practice your glazing. So I've got one, two, three, and then it's coming down. And so perhaps it comes down to here, or maybe the blue goes with the boom, boom, boom down. Yeah, I think it needs... And maybe it's a bit smaller just here. Vary the shape a little. Or maybe a little tiny one. Oh, I went over the glazing part first. I'm going to vary the shape, which is such a good idea because we're dealing with shape. And a little tiny tail goes to nothing and drop in pink into that balloon. The highlight is on the side that is glazed. So I'll start there and that's it. I'm not going to overdo that one. This um, pink is wetter than the blue so it's spreading like wildfire and I'm probably going to get a um, back run in that one. If you don't like that idea, grab a tissue and lay it down, let it just grab that excess moisture. Oh, I put the line on of the tissue and it um, it created a line just there, but it did not pick up what I wanted it to pick up, which is that. There. It's the sort of subject that works well for just putting a tissue on. And so I haven't touched it and I, was, I almost had no pressure on that little um, shadow. Okay, they're looking nice and a um, bit of movement and I quite like the small one down there um, and whether or not we add more to that will be totally up to us. Uh, so back to the triangles where I was attempting a, a uh, storyline 
Um, I can see now when I look at my design that the dog at this level looks really good. So whether I include another dog, um, I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to come back to this one and uh, glaze on this one. So you could include more people or you could embellish this one here by glazing. So I wasn't doing wet and wet. These are all about wet and wet and then glazing. Uh, Julie says, small one looks like a balloon pal planet. <laughs> yeah, so the shape says I'm round rather than balloon shaped. And yeah, absolutely, that's one of the impacts of, um, of shape. So now let's give this character, I'm calling it a character, a um, cloak. So perhaps the cloak is a triangle within the triangle and I love blue. So I'm going to do that. Oh, not with that brush. I'm going to do it with the flat brush. I haven't used the, the heavy blue yet. I'm thinking the character can have a... Oops, hard to keep talking. The character can have a blue jacket. And the jacket can come down to the floor. And glazing, so the least strokes, the best is the best because you won't disturb the layer beneath. Okay, back to the tissue. I've got a big dob here and a big dob there. So just I just allowed the tissue to do that, and then I don't get the marks of my brush. I might get a tissue mark, but um, generally it's going to, in the quickest way possible, without disturbing the surface, uh, lift off the excess moisture. All right, I'm going to continue with that. So glazing shapes on um, other shapes. Uh, perhaps the person has a triangular hat on. I'm not using my flat brush. I do just default to these brushes. I absolutely love them. There, that one can have a hat. And if this is a bonnet, then I'm going to get pink. So worth using different brushes for this exercise. Uh, sometimes it's not worth the separate brushes, but on this one I think it is. So there'll be a pointy face, but it'll barely be coming out. Perhaps it will just show itself the tiniest amount. Again, I just used my round brush. I keep forgetting to go back. Ah, oh, and this one has to have a cloak on it too. And again, I'm using the round brush. <laughs> I'm going to join that to there, make that triangle come out. It can look so beautiful when you see it half on and half off because that's the beautiful colour and then that is um, the glazed area. And okay, I think the dog needs more importance. I've made a, um, a little drop down here. So I think I'll put a dog there. And um, the dog can be, I don't know, pink this time. Yeah, no, it has to match that dog. Yeah, that's just has to. I don't have a good reason for that. Um, the dog can come in here and <laughs> I've used my round brush again. In here and the dog's head will go over that later and the dog's tail can be a little triangle pointing up here and then we've got the I need to cover that. So that blue, I want that gone. So that's going to be one leg and that's going to be one leg and I'm trying to make them triangular and I'll try and remember the head later and a leg out there. Let's give the yellow some pink. <laughs> I keep changing my mind, don't I? I'm like not wet and wet and now I'm making it wet and wet. And um, I just think wet and wet is the best. Absolutely uh, wonderful. So this dog up here is just like, you know, a bit silly. Oh, this does look a little bit like it's running away. 
So that's cool. That one's in, that one's uh, away. Okay, I think I'll just do more dogs. And um, that one was yellow, and the next one can be yellow plus green. So a dog can come in from this direction. And that's not dry enough for me to put a head on. It's a little bit uh, wet. So this one can be rushing in. So little triangular leg, little triangular leg, little forward leg, little forward leg. <laughs> they just, I don't know what they are. I don't know that they're going to look like dogs, but I don't care. We're just playing with shape and we're thinking about the impact that the shape has each time. Uh, so this head up here, I did the yellow on the pink and um, I think I'm done with uh, all of the glazing because you can see that I'm just slowly stopping glazing. I think this dog could have a little triangular coat on it and there. And perhaps a triangular ear, set of ears to give it. Uh, I'm just using the edge of it there. Now it looks like some really weird creature. Anyway, forge on. That one's going to have a head in a little while. These two could be joined a little more. So with this blue, it's getting really hard just to keep in triangles, by the way. Seemed like such a good idea at the start. So perhaps um, some connecting shapes here. And this is a little bit damp, so it won't glaze. It'll just move that around. So what about if this one, or I'm just going to give this one some more weird-looking triangular clothing. Drop into that pink. It's wet. And triangle, triangle. This, this is wanting some sort of triangle, but I'm not going to do it with this brush. It's actually, it's really great for straight lines, but weirdly for triangles, it's a bit difficult. So I've got this really tiny one, tiny one. This is a black gold, which is also weird because these are called black gold, but obviously, but I don't think there's a relationship because these have got these acrylic handles with the um, Beveled edge. I love these beveled edges. A cape, says Julie. Yeah. Oh, cool. That's, I love that idea. Okay. I'm going to use this little tiny one and create a shape like face. So perhaps it has a line and a little bit triangular. And I'm just going to quickly grab the pink and drop pink into it. Oh, now I'm going to use some of that darker blue there and drop in darker blue. Oh, I'm just going to go around and do that everywhere. Oh, everywhere it's a little bit wet. There too. That's given this dog way more impact, a great example of um, tone. All yellows are lovely and light, uh, and most blues are quite heavy in tone. Or actually, a better way to describe it is that blue is capable of an incredible tonal range and yellow is not. Um, all right, I think I need to dry it, do some final adjustments. And um, this is the sort of painting, though, that is, is very enjoyable because it keeps challenging me uh, to create triangles that are telling a story. The balloons are just easy, and I think as soon as you're painting um, beautiful curvilinear, fat, round shapes, it's much easier for your hand and your brush to be doing that. But um, to do something with triangles is, is really challenging me. And um, I'm enjoying it in for the challenge. And we all know, standing up here to get my dryer, we all know that uh, a challenge is brilliant for our brains.
Alrighty, final touches. I think that this painting needs um, something a little more interesting. So I've got this beautiful pink and I'm going to grab a little bit of the, um, it's called cobalt blue hue and mix a purple. And I just know it's going to, oh, look at that purple. It is magnificent. And swatch over here to check that it's lovely and pale. And then put in an even smaller one. So that one was smaller and rounder. Now I'm going to make a little one. Will it be in there or will it be up there? So you'll come up and down like that. I'm going to put in a little one that is way off in the distance. And again, I've used my round brush, but that is easy. Oh, okay. I'm not doing what I said, which was to go smaller. Oh, it is a bit smaller. And then it's got a tail and that tail can come and stop there because it's off in the distance. Let's give it a little more strength with that pink in there, pink, pink pink and with my round brush remove the highlight once for the final time <laughs> yummy <laughs> thank you Julie that is cool there and a little bit over there so it's roundish I think I'm going to leave that one like that and hopefully that'll be a little bit of a focal point and having said that, it isn't going to dry lighter than the others. It's just going to dry about as light as the others. But if I do want it to look like maybe it's moving away, I won't increase its intensity. I should increase the intensity uh, value-wise of one of the others. But I'm kind of enjoying the softness of all that, um, so of those mid-tones and light tones. Back to this one here where I was attempting to create some sort of drama, I'm going to... Oh, I'm first I'm going to use this magnificent purple. I'm going to give it way more blue. I'm going to tip all that blue into there. Oh, I thought I'd made a mess then. Okay. And I think I'll pick up some of this blue down here too that I squeezed out and I haven't used. All right. I'm mixing a beautiful, intense purple. It's like this royal purple. It's so magnificent. And we're doing triangles only, so perhaps this one can get a collar kind of shape, collar-ish shape. And, oh, the dog needs a head, triangle for the dog's head. And to join them up, I'm going to give the dog an extra triangle, extra triangle, legs, 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 and the tail. Can come up there or oh, come and touch that one and then this head just looks odd so it can have something that comes right down I know I'm supposed to be sticking to triangles but wow that is hard and yeah this color just makes me happy and so the smaller figure can have some as well so um, oh, I'm desperate to put in a triangle here. I have no good reason why there would be a triangle there. Absolutely none. I just feel like I want to do it. And this character needs to be given a little more importance as well. So perhaps this character can be wearing, do I increase the cape look? Come down like that. That's almost an equilateral triangle. And um, there. Oops, I went outside the line again. Oh, well. Um, this one over here has now got pink and then cobalt and then pink and cobalt together. And that little section there is starting to glow in a beautiful way. I'm going to give this dog a little bit of purple and attempt a triangle. A little bit on the head. This one is lovely and beautiful. It's got a little dot of blue, so I'm going to leave that there. 
And is that dry? Yeah. Oh, lovely. I can intensify that triangle. <laughs> I keep forgetting about the flat brush being flat, which sounds ridiculous. But um, making the triangular shapes with this flat brush is not as easy as I thought it was going to be. Anyway, I've intensified it very nicely. I think to finish off, I think this one is done. I don't, it was a great exercise. It was just something that was fun. Um, but this one is the sort of thing that I think you could go and go and go um, playing with the intensity of the triangles. It's surprising how much scope there is with this one. This, this is more realistic. It's a subject. We know what it is. And um, there's, it's kind of hard to tell a story apart from the smaller and the tiny one. Maybe that one's just lost its air. But the triangles, it's really fascinating how it is going to, um, it, I could take it further and further and further, but I'm not going to. It was a great exercise. I'm going to remove the tape so that we can do any final adjustments. I'm going to tear it out. Um, not tear it out. I'm going to remove it from the page I'm, and cut it up and stick it into my book as an example of shapes. And I do believe that this is giving, by, by creating those dynamic diagonals, that I am getting um, a sense of kind of energy and, and, and kind of excitement. I'm not sure at all that it makes you feel comfortable versus this one. I think this one is all about comfort. Thank you, Julie, who says thank you for another great session. I really, really appreciate it. And please give me a thumbs up if you're online with me right now. I, uh, it means the world to me. And I so appreciate you joining and commenting. And uh, next week is already scheduled. And we get to play with colour, which is one of my most fabulous uh famous <laughs> most. Um, it's the subject that I love the absolute most. It's my most loved subject. And I think that we will paint pairs and uh, create an artwork. Perhaps we'll <clears throat> paint one painting next week and put some pairs down. Or maybe we'll do a circle next week. Um, because then we'll be doing, um, Lena says, very inspiring. Thank you. Thank you, Lena. I love that you said that. Um, if maybe next week we do a circle and then the pairs within the circle. And that way we're not always being uh, forced to do what the manufacturer is um, asking us to paint on a particular shape with a particular uh, ratio of height to width. Mind you, by putting the tape on, we're changing it a little bit. And Liz, Liz says, Goody, I love painting pairs. Me too, Liz. I absolutely love it. Right, so next week we'll do a circle. So um, a plate would be brilliant if, um, oh, a tondo. Oh, is that what it's called? Fantastic. Julie, thank you. A tondo. I'm going to look that one up. And, um, yeah, so a round and then we'll place some beautiful pear shapes with it in it and we'll be playing with colour. So that will mean anything that you want it to mean, but at the same time, I'm going to be talking about colour and uh, colour theory and ways of, um, you know, like put the yellow and the purple together, put put complements together, stuff like that, um, but things that are going to make the pear pop or pink things that are going to make the pear soft. Oh, maybe we should do too. Oh, so many wonderful ideas when you start thinking about um, shape. Lena says, I had a go at your Shirley Trevina inspiration. Turned out great. Wonderful. Circular piece of paper. Liz Chatterton uses it often. I didn't know you could buy circular paper. I knew you could buy circular boards, but when I do a circle, I just draw a circle. Oh, another thing to look up. That is wonderful, guys. Thank you so much. I absolutely love it. I appreciate your support and that you've turned up and painted with me or taken notes like Liz that, so that you've got something interesting to go and explore with. And those triangles really, really uh, surprisingly challenging but interesting at the same time. Wonderful thing to do. Thank you so much, guys. I look forward to seeing you next week to do pairs on a round. I'm going to go write myself a note immediately so I cannot forget those wonderful ideas. Thank you so much, guys. See you next week. Bye.